Hey everyone, it's the Upshift Car Blog here, and today I have this 2022 Kia Carnival SX Prestige. It's in flare red over black interior, black leather interior. So let's go ahead and um, get started here on this rear seat entertainment system overview. All right, so here we are inside the 2022 Kia Carnival with the rear seat entertainment system. This is the SX Prestige trim, which comes with um, natural or real leather seats and these cool VIP recliners uh, here in the second row. Heated and ventilated rear seats. Um, but on all trims, you do get these cool power ports here. So you have your AC and your regular um, DC ports. And one of my favorite things is you do get these speakers in the doors, which means that sound quality is excellent back here. And so these rear seat entertainment system is a $1,500 option for Alex, Alex seat package and EX trim levels. They are standard equipment on SX and SX prestige trims. So here are the screens. So there's two, they're kind of mounted tablet style. And then um, you see the mounting point here, which is typical for Kia entertainment systems. And here's kind of what they look like. So you kind of have this carousel of apps, which looks pretty excellent. And on the sides here, you do have your ports. So you have your HDMI, AV, uh, your headphone jack, and USB type A. So before I get started, I just wanna say that this is probably the best Kia entertainment system so far on any vehicle. Definitely surpassing the old Sedona one and definitely also passing up the Telluride and the Sorento one, which had that tile system. If you don't remember, I'll go ahead and make a link to that video in the description or make sure to click out in the pop-up banner. But with the 2022 Carnival, we have the carousel of apps, and most importantly is the integration. So let's get started here. So biggest thing you've probably already noticed is the kids theme. Kids theme is by Ping Fong, which is the company that brought us Baby Shark and has annoyed me for the past couple of years. Regardless, um, well, I want to say annoying me just because I can't get this song out of my head. Not because there's anything wrong with Ping Fong or Baby Shark at all. So anyways, um, you do have a whole bunch of different cool things here. You have your Baby Shark song and games, which I'll go ahead and click on. I'm not going to play, play any of them just for copyright reasons. Just going to wait for it to load here. All right, so here we have our, you know, videos. Keep scrolling here. Here are our games. And yeah, touch response is pretty great on here. It's reacting nicely to my finger. Also, the, the screen feels nice too, which is pretty good. And uh, if you want to go back, just press the on button or the button, button in the top left. We have your USB, which could play audio vi files, video files, music files. Uh, movie files and so forth. We also have YouTube Kids, which is a specific browser meant for um, kids. So it pulls up YouTube videos that are kid friendly. So here we go. You kind of see the different selections that autom automatically pop up for me at least. And yours might be a little different depending on uh, what's available on YouTube or what YouTube thinks would be good. And so that's the YouTube kids mode and this is the kids mode in the rear seat entertainment system here. So this is a really cool feature, one of the standout features on this rear seat entertainment system and what makes it so thoughtful to the use case for this vehicle. And it's again, it looks really nice, really nice and sharp graphics here on the screen. Now let's go back home here. Oh, there we go, default theme. So one of the things I want to point out beforehand is this system requires a Wi-Fi connection. So if you wondered how I got onto that internet browser, I have these screens here, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, it's not gonna focus, but it's hard to tell. But these screens are connected to my Wi-Fi. And this car does not come with in, you know, in-car Wi-Fi or its own Wi-Fi hotspot, which means that you're going to need to bring your uh, Wi-Fi capable device, like your phone or like a Wi-Fi personal mobile hotspot like a jetpack or like a pocket Wi-Fi type of system or something like that because a lot of what these screens use 
requires Wi-Fi and it's very heavily dependent on Wi-Fi for you know the best um, experience with the system here. So before I go around the carousel, let's go look here at the bottom. So this is your kind of your home screen. You have um, put it to sleep here with the moon. You have your brightness adjuster. Day and night, night mode is just a brightness adjuster. It doesn't change the theme on the screen like you would see like on a phone or on your web browser. It's just a brightness adjuster basically, like a quick preset. Here's your volume knob. Here's how you can change the audio output. So right now I have it connected to Bluetooth and it's connected to the car's Bluetooth um, audio. And down here is how you can adjust the input lag. So you can kind of see here, sometimes over Bluetooth connection, there's a little bit of a lag, especially if you're watching movies. So that's actually pretty nice to have. So to connect the entertainment system to the infotainment's Bluetooth connection, you would go into your settings here. And it's automatically connected before you even, um, you know, get the car. So you don't have to really worry about it, but just in case if it gets lost or something, Kia, Kia Motors connected. So that's the infotainment system. All right, so when they are connected, the screens, it's gonna show you something like this on the screen here. You can kind of see rear monitor left, because that's the one that I'm filming with. Of course, it'll show rear monitor right if that's the one you want connected. You can switch through the connections using this button here. So I can switch between rear monitor left or right now I have a phone also in the Bluetooth memory. To get to the Bluetooth settings here, you're just going to go back to your home page. Just swipe over, oops, just swipe over to from the home page. So swipe left, go into setup, go into device connections. And here's kind of how you're going to get to Bluetooth. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So this is where you would adjust the CarPlay and Android Auto settings. But that's not the point of this video here. So we're going to go into Bluetooth. And here you go. So you can only have two devices connected to the Bluetooth system at the same time. So just keep that in mind. But only one is going to be playing through the speakers. And if you want to add one in case you get lost, or in case the monitors get lost off the Bluetooth or deleted, you just go down to the add new and it will be able to pick up those monitors pretty easily um, because they are, for the most part, kind of built into the system here. So just keep that in mind. So back to our rear screens, going back home. Let's go starting do the carousel here. So one of the biggest changes and one of the best things about this 2022 Carnival rear seat system is we finally have iPhone mirroring. This is really great news, especially for us Apple users who were kind of not able to screen mirror on any other system. So far, this is the only system from Kia that allows you to screen mirror iOS devices. So iOS is Apple. The Telluride and Sorento system is Android only. Same with the previous generation of Carnival slash Sedona here in the States was only able to mirror Android devices. So in my experience with the iOS mirroring is that it's really good. Um, images quality is pretty good. There's not too much lag, you know, not too much perceptible lag. It is playing through AirPlay or um, Apple TV. So this means that you're going to have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi. So that means that your screen has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi as your phone or your iOS device that you're trying to mirror, which again means that you're going to need to have a Wi-Fi connection. And then again, you know, that's like, like I said, you have to make sure you bring a Wi-Fi capable device or a Wi-Fi hotspot in order to take full advantage of these screens. Android mirroring, you don't really need a Wi-Fi hotspot, but for iOS, you, you will need that Wi-Fi connection. So going back home here, we have your AVN. Again, you know, you, uh, Kia does supply you with two AV cables. They're in the glove box. And let's move on here. Podcast. So podcast is a really cool feature. You can listen and watch your various podcasts. Again, you're going to need a Wi-Fi connection, but you can see here the screen quality and speed is very nice. So we did have different um, podcasts you can look at, different categories. And it's quite a selection. It's uh, really nice. And then we also have our YouTube app. So this is not YouTube Kids. This is just a regular YouTube. So it's going to pull up just a regular YouTube mobile browser. 
And you could also sign into your account if you have one up there. Search videos using the magnifying glass. But this is just kind of like the default screen that you see on a YouTube homepage that's not signed in. So you could have these different categories, popular videos. Screen quality again is pretty good. And I'd say it's probably a 1080p screen. So image quality is also pretty nice. One cool feature is Twitch. So again, you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can open up Twitch and you could watch Twitch streams or you know what's uploaded on Twitch here, which is a pretty cool feature, especially if you're younger and are familiar with Twitch, are familiar with gaming and you know really enjoy you know gaming content. This is really cool to have. And of course, being a Kia, you have your Sounds of Nature. So you can play through the USB or you could play through, um, not the USB, you could play through your Bluetooth, play through your Bluetooth headphones or your wired headphones. I'm going to have to actually pause this. Okay. And of course, there's USB. So USB could play music files, movie files, video files. Um, so if you have a USB stick that you put, uploaded your movies to, um, definitely you could plug that in and it'll play it right here. Netflix. This is a Netflix app that pulls up your, you know, your basic Netflix. Um, you're definitely going to want to make sure you sign in for the best experience because if you're not signed in, then it's just going to load nothing. But you can see it's not too slow here, the screens. I remember complaining about the previous generation entertainment system on the Sedona being really slow. This is pretty good. And you have your HDMI. I'll come back to the HDMI in a second. And you have your news reader here. So news reader is just like your basic news app. You can read and watch the latest news. So we can kind of see here's all the latest news going on. Just in time to face you can hear it playing through the speakers. To play. And um, you can also read the news articles as well. Screen sharing, so screen sharing is not mirroring. Screen sharing is how you connect the left screen and the right screens together. So one thing with screen sharing that is important to note here is that screen quality does go down a little bit. Even gives you a little warning here that the screen quality does go down a little bit. Let me see how bad it is. And it's a little hard to tell over the phone or on the camera here but screen quality has gone down um, I'd say maybe about 50% so or actually not 50% but it is a little bit fuzzier than without screen mirroring so let me uh, take this off here maybe we can see a quality difference okay so you can kind of see that snappy difference in quality so here much crisper clean images and click screen sharing and you can kind of see the just the, the carousel of apps even is not quite as crisp and last but not least we have our settings so pretty cool you can do your language here's how you connect your bluetooth like your bluetooth headphones or make that bluetooth connection to the infotainment system Network, so here's how you connect the screen to the Wi-Fi, your user guide, um, your power settings. So you can turn it on automatically or manually, so that's up to you. And um, system, system information too is pretty neat. You can update the system here. As well, um, it's in one of these settings here. And um, you also have your user guide. I'm glad that they include the user guide here on the screen. It makes it really nice, especially if you have any questions on it. You're not, you know, kind of digging through something or looking in the glove box for a manual. It's all right here, which is fantastic. All right. So with that being said, let me go ahead and, and show you guys the HDMI connection here. And um, we'll be back. Okay. So right now I have the USB connected and I have the USB open here. So I'm just plugging my USB into my laptop here, but you can plug it into a DVD player, your Xbox, PS4, Nintendo, or anything that's USB capable. 
And so I have it plugged into the port here. I'm just having the basic, uh, you know, the Kia Carnival web page up. And you can kind of see that the screen quality is quite low. So again, if you're using HDMI, just keep that in mind that the screen quality has gone down quite a bit. And I'd say we're probably at maybe 480, 360p, somewhere around there. Um, it is quite grainy. And so if you are watching movies, if you are playing your gaming system, just keep that in mind. And you're probably going to be best off if you're trying to watch a movie by streaming it on Netflix or Twitch or YouTube or by screen mirroring via your Android or iOS devices. Because um, with the HDMI connection here, screen quality is quite low. And I'm also screen sharing it on my right screen here. And it's even fuzzier. It's really hard to tell on the camera here, but this is pretty fuzzy. Um, this probably looks like 240p, to be honest. So, um, pretty, you know, pretty low quality if you're plugged into HDMI. So, again, if you're trying to get the best quality out of these screens, make sure you stay with the native apps or with the iOS mirroring. To conclude on this Kia Carnival Rear Seat Entertainment System is that it's a really significant upgrade to previous versions and even current versions of the Rear Seat Entertainment System within Kia's lineup. I'd say this one is the best so far because it includes thoughtful touches like the kids theme, even though I do wish that the kids theme can be activated or locked from the front seats. So far, it can only be activated from the rear seats. And also, the iOS integration. So finally, we can screen mirror our iOS devices on a Kia entertainment system, which is really wonderful, and it's not just for Android only. Overall, screen quality is pretty good, and again, touch response on the screens is good. I just wish that the car came with in-car Wi-Fi to take advantage of these screens, so that way you don't have to use your own personal Wi-Fi or your phone or anything like that. And I do wish the screen quality didn't change between sources. So HDMI and screen sharing did decrease the quality a little bit. And so I wish you know the quality just stayed the same across all the sources. But regardless, a really great system and a worthwhile upgrade for Alex EX trim levels. And you'll definitely enjoy these on your SX and SX Prestige trim levels here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informational and informative. And if you do have any questions, please drop them down below in the comment section and I will try to get to them as quickly as possible. With that being said, thanks guys for watching and see you guys next time.